get into our mission statement. All right. So our mission here is to create the greatest group of professional traders compiled in the world. We work tirelessly every day to improve our individual selves and push each other to get the most out of one another. With each individual's personal accountability, 100% effort, and consistent actions towards focusing on our controllables, we will each reach our full uh, each reach our full potential individually and as a family. I, Stephanos, pledge to be the best version of myself today, to do whatever it takes to be the greatest trader that I can be, and to be the most self-disciplined person that I know. I will do the things I have to do today, regardless of how I feel, one day at a time, one hour at a time, and one minute at a time. I will control what I can control and not worry about anything else. Reminders, we do not overtrade, we do not overrisk. You don't need to catch a trade today. We want to, but we don't need to. One to two trade ideas per day. Three, if it's a perfect setup. Capital preservation over capital appreciation, aka risk management, is number one. That's your number one focus. Keep your trading plan in front of you. Make smart decisions. Stack smart decisions. Also, we are system oriented. Not how much money can I make on this? Now, I want you guys to have a sense of urgency today. Push. Make sure you get those daily must done as early as you possibly can. Eliminate excuses and any victim mindset. Full accountability for your actions. It's the only way you're going to get better and improve. All right. So looking at the economic calendar today, again, we got monetary policy report hearings coming out of Great Britain. We'll see if there's any news headlines from that. But um, we have unemployment claims, as always, on Thursdays. Um, and that's about it for, for our uh, New York session. So we'll see if we get any volume from that. We'll take a look at the... Uh, the, the charts right now and, and see if we got any setups going on. I know, Quentin, you were just mentioning GJ. Um, let's actually start with GJ right now and take a look at what we got going on. Monthly, we don't really need to break down. It really doesn't change too much. This monthly has been going back and forth over here. The weekly over here as well has been pushing bearish and then also retracing a little bit, right? Previous bearish candle ended up closing very strongly from our area up here. Right, nice bearish candle close. Now this candle is trying to figure out what it wants to do. Does it want to stay holding a higher low over here, or do we want to push down and pass the low of that candle to continue down? Or is this candle even going to flip bullish? Right, multiple things can happen. Looking at the daily, now we could start breaking down these ranges here. So you get that resistance. We have obviously one fifty six. It's always been a major area of uh, interest over here. And then you do have 160. That price could be, you know, we've rejected multiple times in the past over here. We recently held as a resistance to push down. But now it's starting to look like we're creating a higher low over here and possibly pushing up. Right? You got that higher low right here. Failed to retest 156. And now we're getting another higher low where we're pretty much just ranging in this area right here. But right now, this candle is creating a higher low and a higher high. All right. So now if we're looking at this, just going to adjust that down there. Our previous support right down here, we've rejected in the past. Uh, we now created a higher low. Now, if we're looking at this, since tapping off of uh, 162 multiple times over here, we've been making these lower highs, right? Now, take a look at the current lower high that we're creating, potentially. We're starting to meet up with this area, right? Now, don't take that as your full confluence, but right now, that could be where we're coming up into, like we talked about yesterday, where we create that lower high like we do over here, right at 160. We could be doing that right now at 159 flat to continue right back down. But the one thing on your side for price to possibly break through that area is the fact that we are creating a higher low here, right? We, it's not like this can, uh, these candles over here were down here. We created a new low and now we're coming up and now we can continue back down. We're, we're also creating a higher low, which tells us that we're in a major range, which we already know, right? So, um, we have a, I want to break it down on some of the lower time frames, but we do have this area where price has pushed into multiple times and also rejected, right? You got that previous support to the left over here as well. We recently broke through that area and closed above. 
rejected it multiple times over here with these candles and now it looks like we got a fairly clean move to the left over here at least coming into 159.500 you see on the uh let me zoom in if you see on the four hour that's your next resistance over here in the area of interest, at least on the four hour. We'll see if there's anything closer on the lower time frames, but on the four hour, that's what it looks like. But we're holding a nice support over here, rejecting these areas, get that bullish close, another bottom wick form, passing the high, and now passing, um, you know, continuing up. It's a pretty strong four hour candle. Only thing is, like, do we have the volume right now to continue pushing us up against this overall trend that we've been in since uh, late January? Right, it's it's just been all lower highs so far, but now we're getting that higher low. All right, so now we gotta adjust because now it's getting a little messy, right? You got this resistance right over here that we've rejected multiple times in the past. Nice clean move up to the left. This is our recent support over here. And we are also kind of pretty much consolidating in this area, right? Um, let me move this to the left and you're starting to see multiple rejections over there to the left as well. Again, this is very messy. Sometimes it's going to be like that. And, and you just got to be able to really study the candles, go back and forth on the time frames, understand why price is moving the way it is. But right now you're starting to see some kind of a rejection right here, right? Not saying that that's the trend line, but you're starting to see like there's not enough volume for this to push up as a classic breakout trade, Right. We could be pulling back right now, creating a high up here, pulling back. Let's see if we even hold support right here, right? Do we hold support and then continue up? This would be more so a um, something I'd wait for a break and retest for, right? There's certain setups where you have consolidation and prices bouncing back and forth, right? And then you have a nice breakout where you have the candle close above, and then you could take this thing up. You get a clean move to the left. But with this setup right here, this is not good enough for me to take a breakout. I know we got a clean bullish candle right there to possibly put your stop loss right there. But I don't think we have enough bullish volume during pre-New York to push this price up and at least give us the one-to-one. -one. So now looking at the 30-minute here. Yeah, 30-minute just passed the high of that candle. Now it's flipping bearish and passing the low of the previous candle. Right? What do we say about those candles? So it seems like we keep rejecting this area over here. You got that wick candle ended up flipping bearish, right? And I mean, this candle was huge over here. Uh, this 30 minute candle during uh, late Asian, early, you know, pre London. I would actually just move this right here on the 30 minute. We keep rejecting that area right there. Let's see if that area holds support, especially with this price action right here. Um, you're now, again, possibly creating a lower high. Last time we did that you get this price action, right? Can this end up happening? Possibly, but we need to see certain things before we start executing on something like that, all right? We need to know if, um, actually this, I would just move down here, got that previous resistance support over here. So you gotta see if like, this is even worth trading in to execute on the fake out, right? It could end up being, you could end up getting right here, what you got right over here. Right? It's not necessarily like a clean uh, fake out over here to continue down, kind of like what you got right here. This this is the type of price action you want. right? But let's see what we end up getting in here. You could possibly grab one of these moves right here. right? Um, you got that bearish candle closing and then continuing down, but very choppy in this area. This is kind of what you want to capture. So we'll, we'll see what we end up getting here. We'll see if we even hold support right there. Because that could possibly happen as well. See if we continue right back up and, and retest those highs. But I think um, you're going to have safe buys above 159, 140. All right. So I, I wouldn't touch anything in here, I don't think. Let me actually just measure the range before I say that. Yeah. You only got 20 pips in there. It's just not really worth it. Let's go back up to the higher time frame for a second. So again, the daily is bullish, created a nice bottom wick past the high of the previous candle. You know, we could be getting that higher low that we've been getting over here, right? And continuing right back up this way, All right? But we'll see if we have the volume today. Also, don't forget economically, we have GDP coming out tomorrow, right? So this could be a, a more of a rangy day for GJ as well. So let's just sit back, wait for it. 
see the four hour again four hour does look nice for price to continue up only thing i i see is like a couple weak candles over here which kind of concern me a little bit but i i could see after this candle right here if we end up closing bullish like that on the uh four hour at 9 a.m that the next candle comes down creates a bottom wick and continues up so this this is something you want to use all time frames on for you to end up catching anything see how these candles again getting a little bit weaker I could see this consolidating in here, right? The four hour maybe end up closing like that. And then the next candle creates its bottom wick, flips bullish, and we continue up around 9 a.m. Make sense? Yeah. Awesome. What's up, Shargio? What's up? How are you, man? Been great. How about you? Great, man. Been great. All right. Hey, morning, morning, man. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. You have a good day at work. Uh, I didn't work last night, actually. So oh, yeah, that's I right. Did. It was Wednesday, right? <laughs> yeah, no work. Awesome. Love seeing the consistency, brother. Yep. He's back. All right. Let's look at gold now. So gold monthly has not really changed too much, right? Um, this candle has been rejecting that uh, 1960 area. Right, so we've been rejecting that area right now, flipping bearish. Um, and right now, we got to see, let me see the weekly. Yeah, the weekly over here has been kind of holding a support, right? We got that candle that we like right over here, right? Um, we're, we're in a major bullish trend, as you guys know. Very... Uh, it's been more of a dovish Fed, but right now I, I think everyone's kind of understanding what Powell was saying last week and and this week he is pretty hawkish, right? It's it's not that he's um um really like gonna come back on any kind of rate hikes or anything like that. He 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 does want to combat inflation and and bring it down right now, and that's where you got this uh, bearish move from and this correction. As I told you guys, we were really due for. So right now. Are we going to hold the support is the big question, or is this candle just creating that top wick? And now the second half of the week, we end up flipping bearish and continuing right back down, getting us more of a, a pullback. If you look at the daily right now, daily is uh, actually ended up closing exactly the way we said it would yesterday. Right? Where this candle... The previous two candles ended up closing bullish, right? We got a, two very strong bearish candles closing right below this previous support over here, right? So this candle ends up closing right below that area. Strong close coming right into this key area that we're respecting with this trend line. But then you get a weak bullish close and another weak bullish close. At the time yesterday when we were breaking down the daily, this candle was pushing up, passing the high of that candle. And I said, I could very well see this candle retracing and closing right over here. If you guys go back and watch the live, you'll see, you'll see what I'm talking about. But right now, this candle is creating a higher low, right? Has not passed the high yet and could very well continue right back up. And that could be that catapult candle that brings you right back up to, uh, you know, 1900 over here. But at the same time, what it could do is end up rejecting this area that we keep rejecting in the past over here. This candle could either close a really weak bullish candle or flip bearish and then continue right back down, at least down into 1830. Hey, hey, Steph, before you continue, yeah, how do you find uh, resistance right there? How do I what? Like, you added resistance? Yeah. How do I find it? Or how, do, how uh, did I use the record? No, I didn't know where it was coming from. I see it now. Okay. Yeah, so you got, I mean, again, like th this just comes from experience, I would say. It's just uh, understanding where the resistance or the support's going to be in the higher time frames uh, on li like the daily. I know that this is probably some kind of a resistance here on the 30 minute. And then you see that bearish candle as well. So it's just, it, it's all in the candle bodies where you see how weak these candles are. Even though they are holding support and they are bullish, they are still rejecting some kind of an area right here. Get what I'm saying? It's a good question. Yeah, thanks. Yep. So now looking at the four hour, yeah, there you go. Now you're seeing that resistance right there to the left. And then also 
this resistance over here that we're going to need to break above before price continues back up into this area of uh, 1901, 1900 flat. We're going to measure this range. Yeah, you got about 140 pips in there. So, and a clean move, clean candle. So you can very well mirror that if we're able to push through that area. Or do we end up rejecting as this candle starting to flip bearish right here? It is just a doji, so it could continue up. But uh, last time we were in that area, we got a hard push down. And that created that um, higher low. So now, does this look like something that you guys want to be trading in? Right now, right? So what you guys want to wait for is the clean price action here to the left. Beautiful move. And we're also breaking this trend line over here. So I could very well see if, if we end up closing below this area, you could grab the impulsive move down, know the limitation to your trade. So know that you got to secure a majority of it either down here or even down to 1830. But know that you're going to get some kind of a heavy pullback back up to retest that trend and then continue right back down potentially or just fakes it out and continues back up. But you can grab the impulsive move right here and then you can also grab the retest to continue down. I like to do that often. We're looking at the one hour now, now you're starting to really see that resistance that we keep rejecting right here. Again, plenty of room for you guys to be trading over here. And then even through that, obviously this is a very critical level. If you look at the daily, right? You had that support right there and then that wick right there that bounced into that area, that could very well be a resistance. But now if we're looking at the lower time frames here, you really do have a clean move coming up into here. Right? You really do have potentially 315 pips that you could be mirroring. But understand that this is going to be the limitation of your trade. Do not get greedy. I would be securing uh, part of your position right there. But part of that is up to you. Where you want to, or you know, how much you want to secure. <laughs> but right now, what we can see here. Yeah, um, to suggest this. There you go. So what you're seeing here are some higher lows, right? Higher low, higher low. You know, we keep respecting that. And it looks like we want to break through that area, but you need to wait for the close above because you got all this price action. You can very well tap into this area, start to break that area, and then all of a sudden it rejects and then continues right back down. So just be aware of that. You don't want to be caught in that. So wait for the close above this area. Clean close. You can very well take the impulse. This is where you guys want to take the breakout trades, right? On, on a setup like this. Just make sure you wait for a candle close above that area. Look at the last time we kind of closed at the area and then rejected hard. Closed at the area, rejected hard. Same thing right over here. All right, so just wait for that. I wouldn't really be trading anything in here. It's just not worth it, especially when you get ranges on either side of that, that area, right here and right here, that you could possibly grab a move in. Can I adjust this right there? Got that nearest support right over there. So you know you at least have 180 pips that you could be grabbing something in. Up there. One second. All this is no go. All right. That's what you're looking for. Everyone clear on that? Good. All right. Looking at the monthly on US 30. So the monthly over here has created a nice bottom wick. Right, 
created a nice bottom wick. It's now starting to, to flip bullish past the high of that candle. I know we're kind of like teetering around that area right now, but um, you know, it's definitely a range above 33,000 and, and 35,000 up here. But let's look at the weekly. That'll give us a better idea. Okay, so the weekly right now is holding a nice higher low. Right? You got that resistance right here. We've held multiple times. You have that resistance, but we're also holding this support down here. And you're starting to see these candles give you all higher lows. We'll see what the price action is on the lower time frames, but giving you higher lows, this candle is strong, even though this candle closed bearish, but the limitation is most likely 34,400, right? We've tapped into that area multiple times and rejected it. So I would expect something like that to happen. But if you do close above that area, I could see 34,900 or, uh, you know, uh, 35,000 right up here getting retested, this previous uh, resistance up here. Let me actually draw that. All right, so that could be our next area of interest. It could very well get end, uh, end up getting moved up here, but we'll see. I'm just targeting this wick right now. All right, so this, we could just move that down there. No real safe cells. We'll see on the lower time frame, but I doubt it. So it, it just doesn't make sense, you know, encompassing this fake out over here when you get all these rejections here. You don't want to get caught in that. All you got to do is just put that there. And honestly, you can argue if you just put it right there, these wicks here on the lower time frames are all supports. So once you break that area, this might be safer for you to come into as you got some of these candles over here that you can mirror, right? But that's not important right now. What we're looking at is you got that resistance over here to the left, multiple rejections. And right now we are creating some kind of a, you know, bullish trend over here. But you see the exhaustion in these candles, right? Right. You're not getting a nice push up this way. You're seeing all these huge wicks, small bodies. It's, it's not like this. It's not like this, right? That's what you want to see. This might be dangerous to trade in. So this, you might want to wait for price to break above this area. Looking at the four hour. Let's see. Yeah, this is where it gets a little difficult. Let's adjust this up a little bit. Yeah, let's see, you can adjust that. You can very well grab something in here, I'm sure. Small range, but you see what I mean? Yeah, 200 points. So possibly, but um, yeah, this is all very difficult to trade. You got your most recent support. You have this resistance that was broken. You see all these wicks over here. So we encompass all those wicks. And then you got these candle body re uh, resistance right over here as well. So we just closed above, but no top wick. Just closed above that area, just no top wick. So can we hold this area as a support and then continue right back up? I'm actually going to draw that like that, get that support. Um, this range right over here, if we do hold support there and get that, like a nice strong bullish close, I can see this possibly continuing up just because we declared this area here. And then you get the clean moves here to the left. Let's see the one hour. Okay, one hour. It's definitely coming into that area that we're talking about. We just got a strong bearish close. Let's see if we can reject this area. If we could get a nice support holding. I could see this thing continuing up. Only issue is like all these wicks. You really got to be careful on this. I don't even know if I want to touch US 30 in these areas. Got that resistance right there. Price could reject. All these areas that price could end up rejecting, but let's see what we end up getting. I'm just gonna adjust this here. See the 30 minute for a second. Yeah, now 30 minute, I would just adjust right here. Just to encompass all that. And we actually just ended up closing below that area. We are holding some kind of a support right here at this previous resistance. So we'll see if that holds, and it's just a deeper pullback. And then if we close above 180, 34,180 right here, 
I could see us continuing up if we get like a strong close. But if we keep holding this area as a resistance and close below, could we possibly take some cells coming right back down? Do you guys see that move yesterday that we talked about? Ended up losing the trade, but I was right on the idea. We ended up pulling back before, um, you know, around 930. Got a nice bullish push over here at 930. Held a lower high and then continued all the way back down. You got this retest over here to then continue down, but not enough uh, volume during later New York to push this all the way down and correct this move. We ended up creating this higher low, and now we're just kind of pushing up over here. Been pushing up over all night, right, and uh, continuing up. So, again, a lot has to do with this area and if we could close above. the four hour yeah i could definitely see the four hour creating that higher low and continuing up daily is pretty strong right now breaking through some of these wicks so far let's see what we got yeah it's just kind of ranging i don't, I don't really want to touch uh us 30 today Unless we break out of this area, I could see maybe getting some of this correction right here with that clean move coming right down into here. That's definitely enough range. Let's see what we do. All right, GJ so far is holding a support. All right, 30 minutes starting to flip over here. Yeah, it's only 20 pip range. So I would want to see a close above this area. And this is the bigger range that I'd want to play with. 40 pips. So that's big enough. Yeah. Everything's a mess today. So that means we got plenty of uh, opportunity for breakdowns. So who wants to uh, break down the chart first? I'll go ahead and break one down. Awesome. What would you like to break down, buddy? Um, doesn't really matter to me. If you want to pick one for me. Sure. You want to break down oil for us? Sure. All right. Monthly. Keep bringing this down. Okay. So, I'm going to draw a level of resistance right here. I'm going to draw. Okay. I'm going to draw a level support right here. Nice. Most recent support resistance, right? Yeah, I've also got my eyes on this right here. But I just don't like how price is broken through this level. Mm. Like here, back into this range to our support, you know, broken out of it, but it's holding it here. That's why I'm interested in it. Yeah. So we, we have, also have these wick rejections. You could draw that. You also got multiple rejections to the left as well. Yeah. So we'll see what that looks like on the lower time frame. I, I probably guess that it might be down here as well. Mm -hmm. As you got all those wicks. But we'll we'll see. We'll keep it right there for now. Um, how about the uh, high that we came down from? Yeah, I would mark that off as well. Yeah. All right. Yeah, it looks good for the monthly. So the weekly now. 
Yeah, there it is. Yeah, definitely. So I would adjust that zone. Where? I would adjust that zone to somewhere down in this area. This one? Yep. Nice. Okay. Um oops, I'm sorry, that was a mistake. Um can you like zoom out or move to the left a little bit? Yeah. Yeah. It's... Okay. I would um I would move Just this zone. Okay. Somewhere down in this area right here. Just keep in mind, more. like when you have all this price action right here, and you have, you know, price is starting to correct that, a lot of this stuff doesn't really matter too much. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Especially on the lower time frame. So, what you could do is just start marking off the most recent support and resistance in this area. Yeah. And honestly, this is all the, like, this area right here is all I really wanted to see a little better. Okay. Oh, uh, but yeah, I would still move this zone a little lower to incorporate these rejections here, these three rejections right here. Is this good? Yeah, I mean, honestly, I'm more interested, I think, up here as well. So right at the uh, the $64 level. Oh, okay. So you just you want it right here. Yeah, around there. Yep. Okay. Gives us more of a range. Yeah. Um. And then from there, I would just probably pull this zone lower to mark off the level of resistance better. Beautiful. So now all you know is we're, we're in a weekly range right now. Yep. That's all that really matters. But once we break out of that resistance around 8260, where are we going? Yeah, so we break out of that. We are looking to retest um, this zone right here. Which lines up with the $92. We have yeah. the clean traffic to the left. How about right here? I mean, yeah. Got that clean move coming up into there, and that's that area that price likes to tap into. And that's also uh, $94 a barrel. Yeah. Nice. See, I, I, I drew it lower simply because I like this support, yes. Now, well, what about that resistance right there and then these wicks? Yeah, you, yeah, I see what you're saying because it's still being respected as support. Support again, failed break higher though here and then broke below. Yeah, I definitely see what you're saying too. Right. Yeah, all yep. those projections in that area. This one, you only really have that one. So it's almost yeah. like, uh, I guess you could call that process of elimination or no, nah, not really. It's just majority, majority rules. <laughs> There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So now, what are we seeing here? A mess. Yeah, it is pretty choppy. You know, honestly, oh, what's this? Daily? Okay. Yes, sir. So, oops, this arrow. Can you zoom in a little bit, please? Zoom I'm more in. interested in just like this current price action range that we're in. Mm -hmm. So I would draw a level right here. What's that? $79. Now obviously, we're approaching that zone. We've seen price reject from it once. Um, kind of seems like, you know, with this current daily candle, we're trying to do that again. But with it being so early in the day, you could just be creating a bottom wick and then try and break above this level. I like it. 
So, yeah. Um. Other than that, I may zoom out and shrink the zones, but I wouldn't add anything else right now. Okay. Let's uh let's take a look at the uh. Yeah, here we go. Yep. Now, what are you starting to see here? Okay, so what I see here, I see a level of support in here. Probably not that big of a zone, but you know what I'm, you mm. can see what I'm saying. Yeah. Um, Which looks really nice if price, I mean, with, with the current price action being bearish, yeah. breaking these lows, and with this wick to fill to the left, if we break this uh, support level, could be a nice opportunity to fill this wick and retest $77 right around there. Okay. So I would also, now I would probably just mark that $77 level off. Okay. Seeing the price action being what it is currently. 77 right down here? Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, that's that's your support that we got to see if maybe there there'd be worth taking a trade down to that area after yeah. a close below here, seven below seventy eight, then you know price could possibly tap into seventy um seventy seven. Looking mm -hmm. at the one hour now, picked a hell of a choppy pair. I know, that's all right though. Um, get you better. Yeah. So same thing. Um, I would honestly try and shrink this zone if I could, you know, by zooming out and looking to the left. But honestly, I don't, I'm stuck. I, I really don't think I would do anything else right now, especially knowing what we just saw in the four hour. Okay. Let me, uh, here, I'm going to go up to the daily for you and kind of, uh, it's almost like you phoning your friend. Yep. I'm just going to help you out real quick. So uh, I like what you did here so far from the monthly to the daily. You got these areas. Price is just kind of ranging in this area right here as well. Um, and now I'm just kind of studying all of this price action right here. And now we're kind of getting something similar over here. So we yeah, keep rejecting that. these resistances. And then you're getting that, that heavy impulsive move down. Same thing here. Heavy impulsive move down right here. And then right here, right? Now, do we find opportunity once we get an impulsive move down? Do we get some kind of a lower high to continue down? Impulsive move down, lower high, continue down? Yeah. So impulsive move, lower high. You actually got one right there to yeah. continue down. And now could we be getting the same thing? Um, we did hold a nice support right in this area as well. So we're bouncing up from that area. Don't worry, I'm keeping an eye on uh, GJ and or other pairs. Okay. So I'm just going to adjust that right there. You get that previous uh, support, resistance, all these rejections. Right? Um, now we're kind of, I would actually just adjust this right down to here. Mm -hmm. And then you, zone. You, you, yeah. you have that support right there that we could come down and retest. And then yeah. once you break below that, you get a fairly clean move coming down into 70. $70 barrels. Definitely. You know, but now you're starting to see that exhaustion as we've seen over here. Exhaustion. But over here, could we be getting that same exact thing coming yeah. down? But like you said, we got to wait for a couple of levels to uh, to break. Probably going to mark this off being that it's still the four hours. So that's probably a resistance on the lower time frames. Um, and then obviously our most recent resistance that we keep projecting here multiple times i like that you mark this level off as well yeah and quick me, scope we can yeah i don't know if i would want to be taking cells even if we like close below that area i don't know if i want to sell in here right maybe i want to just wait for price to break out of this area and then you got this move over here and now you know there's a good chance that we could retest that low or at least come into here. Yeah, definitely. We have uh, better candles as 100%. well. 
got like 200 pips right there. Or Yeah, 200. So now looking at the one hour, now you're starting to see that exhaustion starting to come down. And this is that area of interest where we just keep tapping into. Got that previous resistance over here, right? Price could very well come into there. But once we break this support, at least we know now we're actually breaking structure and we're continuing down. If we break... Yeah, and this above, is all disgusting. Yeah, yeah. It's just, you don't want to trade that. Once we break up here, now we know, okay, we're like breaking through the previous resistance up here. The, the previous lower high that we formed over here, now we're starting to change structure. Right? Mm -hmm. And now we can mirror this move to the left and tap into uh, 82.50. Um, so, yeah, but I do, again, like, I do like these rejections over here. Like, I could see if this candle ends up closing right there below this support right here. I could see this possibly continuing right back down. So that could be a possible entry. You would just need a wider stop loss somewhere up here or at least above this candle here in the one hour. Mm -hmm. 30 minute. See, this 30 minute candle doesn't have a top wick here. So let's see if we even can close below that area yeah, right there. Not and even if you close do, to it. Yeah. If you do, you might be able to grab this move coming down into here. Yeah. So does that feel a little bit more comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I fully see what you're saying. I understand. You know, I kind of have a feeling that this candle is going to close back into this range as well. Yeah. So what we just did, what does that kind of teach you moving forward when you're when you're breaking down charts by yourself? Do you know? If you don't know, don't worry about it. Um, I mean, I can take a crack at it. What it, what I feel like it teaches me is just like, um, you know, being more. It teaches me like that. I need to learn to speak what I'm saying so I can fully understand what I'm seeing. Yeah. And I, I think and, you do a good, good job of that. I'm thinking more of like, don't be afraid to reset. You know, if like you're breaking the chart down and this goes for all you guys, if you're breaking the chart down from the monthly all the way to the 30 minute, and it's just really not making sense to you like it was before, right? Erase everything and let's do it again. Yeah. You know, and then also what it teaches you is when you volunteer like you do, which is awesome, which I love um, to break down charts, the more you do this, the better you're getting at it. So you just got a lot better by doing that yourself. Obviously, um, everyone else got better by watching that if they were paying attention. But um, you specifically did because you were actually the one doing it. One thing I noticed as well is like I find the um, higher time frame level of resistance that I drew and then you drew one right like above it i found myself doing like drawing those levels that i drew a lot I'm and sorry, it is which, like push, which push, what's that which uh which which area are you talking about you said a higher uh, time frame yeah i don't maybe it was on the daily on the daily yeah i don't remember exactly but you had just moved it slightly, and I asked you, like, why, and you explained it, and it made more sense because we had multiple rejections, like oh. more rejections than the one that I had saw. That's right. Yeah, that was um, – might have been the weekly. Oh, yeah, it was up here. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah, I draw – so, yeah, I draw those levels, like, all the time, but it makes – it's, like, a much better perspective, and it makes more sense now the way you explained it. Well, I'm always doing this versus this. So at least like now I have an understanding and a different perspective. Yeah, one thing you can think about is like, you know, let's say price did get up into this area. Does marking this area off really make sense when you're really going to have safer buys once you break all these areas over here? This is where a lot of people get caught because they want to take a trade. I'm not saying this is you. I'm just saying anyone like they just want to take a trade and they forget about all this stuff. And then they end up getting rejected, and they wonder why they missed it or they lost it. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it's just yeah. like, okay, where are safe buys? It's going to be right when we break above that area and close above, because we failed to close above multiple times. Even though this this candle pushed into this area, we still ended up rejecting really hard and continuing down. So if now we get a weekly close above this area. 
there's a good chance we get a nice weekly breakout and price continues up at least into here. Mm -hmm. And then maybe into here. Yeah. That's why patience is a virtue. Just waiting yeah. for price to hit your levels. 100%. I guess for the higher time frames, lower time frames, all these time frames are the same. So now yeah. looking at oil here and on the daily, you see how this candle is giving us what we like. That setup we've been talking about for weeks now, where it passes the high, flips bearish, and closes bearish. Typically, we want this candle, you know, the 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 previous bullish candle, to have that top wick, or to have a wick, and I don't know. Let's say it like closes, kind of like that. I guess you could say, right? The next candle creates a top wick over here, flips bearish. And then closes a lot farther below that area. Typically, the next candle ends up continuing right back down. Right. But like if you get a candle like this, look at the last times we've done this. I think it's on the four hour. Yeah, the four hour. The four hour, we've kind of gotten the top wick passing, candle flipping. This is what I'm talking about right here, where the candle passes the high, passes the low of that weak bullish candle, and then continues all the way down. And then you got this uh, impulsive move coming all the way down into $77. You know, mm -hmm. now also looking at this, you got this pullback, bullish pullback. Then you start getting this exhaustion right in this area. Top wicks forming, passing the low of the previous candles over here, right? Closing bearish and now continuing right back down. So now you're possibly getting that lower high over here. We never retested this level. Let's see if we get this bearish candle closing, you know, in, in, uh, a couple hours for the four hour in, in one hour, right? This one hour candle is going to be closing or this four hour candle is going to be closing. Let's see if we could get this candle creating a top wick, flipping bearish and continuing right back down that way. And then that might be your trade on the, on the lower time frames where the 30 minute ends up closing below this area, retesting, waiting for that four hour candle to close. Right. Then you get the four hour wick either coming into that area or just retesting that area and then flipping bearish here to continue down and mirror these moves or come into mm -hmm. here. You know? Yeah. So it's it's just about like diagnosing things and really caring about your craft, caring about um your skill set as far as looking at the market and, and training your eyes. It's one thing me and Lim. I think Lim's in here, right? Normally is really good with attendance. Oh, maybe he's oh there he is. Yeah. So Lim was asking um a good question here in the uh Discord. And I'm, I'm going over this because we have very rangy markets right now. But let me uh bring his question up here. Um Hey, Stephanos was reviewing the trade on GJ yesterday upon New York Open. So generally, such trades are valid to take slightly wider stop loss as bottom wick was small during market open timing. So let's see. So you were looking at GJ Lim yesterday. Right over here. Okay. So you were talking about this breakout trade, Lim? Yeah, just a treat. Okay. Now, what was your question exactly with that? Let me see. Because usually I will wait for the retest and then uh, the breakout, right? But in this case, because the bottom weight was quite small, that's why I didn't take the trade. Yeah. So this this trade specifically, um, again, what do you what do you have with this setup right here? You have a beautiful clean move to the left. So check that box, right? You have this, this is where, you know, studying the candles and wicks comes into play when you guys are studying your, uh, your trading plan and, and trading the actual trading plan, study the previous candles and wicks. And what I want you to pay attention to is more so here. And then also right here, right? So you ended up getting a nice, strong, like we were holding support right in this area. We created this high, we got a little breakout over there, but we pulled back. Get these weak bearish candles, bullish candles as well. And then we finally get this close above that area, right? So this candle never broke above and closed above this area over here. Now, this isn't something that I, I would take over here just because, you know, this is London. I think this is the one where um, Shogio got caught on or something like that. I, I remember us going over this yesterday. But, um, 
you know, because of this candle right here, even though it didn't close above, if you get a bottom, let's say this range was bigger and you had a bigger range, um, it was a clean move too. But if let's say this range was a lot bigger, it was only 20 pips yesterday, right here, from here to here, you got 20 pips, right? So if that was bigger, this would be valid. But this is what I talk about when I talk about sometimes for breakouts, candles don't need to close above the previous resistance over here for you to take something. But what you do need to wait for is the next candle to create that bottom wick. So, so you get a bullish close here holding support, and you know we're bouncing off, creating higher lows, and then you get a bullish candle like that. Okay, it doesn't close above. I'm not taking a trade yet. But now what I'm seeing is this candle creating that bottom wick, and now we're passing the high of that candle with a clean move to the left and high volume in the market. I could potentially take this up, right? So that's a little different where this candle actually closed above that area, which is great, right? You get the clean move to the left. This is at 7.30. So typically you're getting a, getting a nice push between 7.30 and 8 o'clock and 8.30 as well. So that whole hour you're getting a nice push. Um, so right over here, you end up getting this higher low kind of being formed. Remember this level that I was just talking about, we closed above with that candle. We ended up pulling back right into that area and holding support many times, right? We rejected that area many times here. And then what did we get? We got this bullish candle closing with a wick to fill. Closed below that area and it was weak. So obviously we're not taking anything just yet. We're waiting for the next candle to close. And let's see if we can close above this resistance right there. And what do we do? We end up closing above, right? So now the only thing is we need to wait for a bottom. Like if this candle passed the high right away, I wouldn't be taking this. But it did create that bottom wick right there, right? And it passed the high, almost an identical bottom wick as this top wick right here. It passed the high at a high volume time with a clean move to the left that you can at least grab the one-to-one. -one. The only problem is, and... Lim, if you have that trading plan that we put together in front of you, what's what's the last thing on the checklist for the entry? What's the last Sorry. thing that you need to check before entering a trade? The bottom it wants to be long. I'm sorry, what was that? The bottom it wants to be long enough. The bottom wick wasn't long enough for you? Yeah. Okay, that's fair enough, which I can see where, where, where you're coming from. Now, what I'm talking about is like, you know, the entry box on your trading plan mm -hmm. under strategy. Mm -hmm. Okay. What's the last bullet point that you need to check for before entering a trade? Stop loss. Stop loss. Exactly. So this trade would be difficult for me to take. And the reason why I didn't take it, because I was already in US 30. So I didn't want to enter this. But if I were to take this one, my stop loss would most likely have to be below this this uh, 30 minute candle right here. Now it could be closer. I'll show you on the 15 minute, but it would have to be there. And I would need to at least be able to get my one to one right here, which you were able to get 21 pip stop loss, 21 pip take profit right there. And you would have, I would have closed the majority of it, if not the full thing right there. Cause I know there's a good chance that we could come back. I'd probably close 90% of that. And I'd move my stop loss somewhere up here, All right? Somewhere right below that area just to minimize risk. But at the same time, I already closed 90%. So even if my stop loss is hit right there, you barely lose anything. But on the 15 minute, there are multiple different opportunities for you to, to um, uh, set a stop loss. One of them could have been below this 15 minute candle right there. And then if you put it below here, I think that would have been the 30 minute, potentially 158, 250. So 158, 250. Yeah, it would have been right below this previous 15 minute candle. But you could have also put it below that candle. But also, this is a little risky, but this comes with experience and, and seeing setups like these. Um, I could see you putting your stop loss halfway between this candle, right? You'd be in trouble. If price, you know, created that bottom wick, passed the high, and then pulled back to create a bigger wick, and then continue up, 
but that doesn't happen as often, especially with this setup. And, you know, if you've seen this before, this is a very strong close above. Would you agree, Lim? Yeah. Very strong candle, right? Yeah. And you also have a very clean move to the left over here that you can mirror. Mm -hmm. So for me, I know Shargil and Quentin both took this. I think one other person took this yesterday. I forget who it was. But, um, you know, I would have put my stop loss here or maybe like somewhere around like 158, 300, maybe right below 158, 300 right there. Right. And then I would have been able to snag my one to one and uh, and grab that move. Make sense? Yeah, makes sense. Thanks. Absolutely. Where's my trade from yesterday? This was my trade from yesterday. So this is a perfect opportunity of, you know, you got the clean move to the left over here. You you do have this resistance right here. So this is what I was looking at. And this is in my journal as well. Um, I need the after picture so I could send this to my. Uh... Oh, no, I did not journal this just yet. OK, I will for you. But um, right over here, um, after my U.S. 30 trade, right, I lost the U.S. 30 trade. That's OK. I managed really, really well. You have this resistance over here, and price is kind of consolidating um, below that area, right? So right here, what we ended up getting was, uh, I went over this during the back testing session too, but we had this rejection, and price keeps rejecting that area. But we also get this higher low form with that bullish candle, right? But again, we fail to break above this area over here with that bullish candle. Then you get this bearish candle close right at that area. Another bearish candle close, you know, below that, creating a lower high and a lower low coming into this area right here. But then what do we get over here? What candle, if anybody could tell me, what candle over here tells me that price could possibly be continuing up? Wait, what candle you're looking at? Yeah. <clears throat> this candle, this big wick is interesting. Which one? <laughs> the one that just happened this morning. This morning? Yeah. I'm talking about right over here from yesterday. Okay. So what, what wick over here, what candle tells me that price could possibly continue up from here? The doji is interesting. Right here? Yeah. Oh, yeah. The fact that this candle, you know, we rejected this area. We did create a new high for the morning, right? But we keep rejecting it. We, we, we don't have enough volume to, to push us through at this time. But then what happens is price, after holding support right over here, sorry, holding support right here, we end up pulling back into this area, retesting this for the last time, and this 15-minute candle ends up flipping bullish and closing like a doji. Now, before I took this trade, and I'll show you what trade I took, I was contemplating entering right here. After this candle created a bottom wick and then passed the high of that candle with my stop loss down here below that candle, the only problem was the range from here to here was only 11 pips. And that's really not big enough for me. And, you know, I already took the loss on US 30, so I was being more conservative. But I was live back testing this as it created a bottom wick, past the high of that candle to continue up and retest the high and possibly continue up from there. So that was one thing that I was looking for right there. Now, the trade I ended up taking was after we got that wick, then we got the strong bullish candle, but also rejecting that area right there, right? What I waited for was this bottom wick on this candle. And then I I think I took this on, yeah, it was really based on the, the one hour too, where the one hour created this high, we pulled back into this area, we tap into this wick, this is more of an experience like setup for you guys, but um, the fact that it passed the low and then passed the high of that candle at a high volume time, this is right before 11 o'clock open, it, as soon as we were passing this high over here, that's where I entered, but it was really on these lower time frames here on the 15 minute because the 15 minute gave us that that bullish candle close. We got the bottom wick formed on that one, 
and past the high of that candle, that's where I ended up entering. Actually, I think it was after we passed these wicks. So we were creating a new high, clean move to the left over here. All I was looking for was 10 pips. And I think I still have it pulled up right here. Oh, no, I don't. Um, where is it? Let's see. Oh, yeah, here you go. So right over here, th this was the move. Now that's on the 30 minute, but you see how the entry was right there as we passed the high of that candle? Lemmy, you seeing this? Yep, same here. So the entry was right there. I closed the full thing right there at 10 pips. Grabbed my 10 pips, got out. And when that's all I was usually... looking for. What's up? Yeah, when do you usually take profits at one to one or 10 pips? Why do I? Yeah, like, like because, because um, you know, as a swing trader, a lot of things are kind of um, you know, unpredictable. You you can't guarantee that you're gonna get a move every single day, and you can't as a scalper either, right? But what you can do is look for the higher probability things as a trader, and especially as a scalper. And as a scalper, would you say that ten pips a day is pretty realistic? No, I, I mean, um, first usually you look for one to one for your trades. So I do. when do you decide uh, between a one-to-one -one trade or a 10 pip trade? That's that's where intuition comes into play. That's what I tell you guys all the time, that you guys are going to start to develop. The more you guys start to study and the more you guys back test and, and see certain things with your pairs, eventually intuition is going to start to come into play. And you know when to take profit. You know when to enter. You know, you know certain things you're able to bend and be malleable where um, you're able to kind of adapt to the market and understand when when it's proper to to just take 10 pips and when it's proper to kind of hold on to a trade just for the one-to-one. -one. Does that make sense? That makes sense. And, and with this specific example, it's because of all this price action that we've gotten over here. You got this impulsive move up, breaking through that resistance, and then we end up consolidating. Impulsive move up, then we end up consolidating and pulling back. Impulsive move up, consolidating, pulling back. Right over here, doing the same exact thing. It's all patterns. Make sense? Yeah, it makes sense. Thanks. Awesome. So we're ranging right now. I want someone else to break down a chart for us. I'm just going to use the bathroom real quick. Um, this coffee really gets me. Um, so whoever wants to... Um, Break down a chart. Just you know, raise your hand or talk in the chat. Let's reboot internet. We'll be back in town. That's fine, Charlie. Um, whoever wants to break something down, let me know in the chat. And then uh, when I come back, I'll I'll set everything up for you.
Yo. All right. Who's breaking down the chart? We are looking at some shit range here. Oh, do one. Nice. What's up, Kia? Nice to have you this morning. All right. What uh, what pair would you like to break down? Um, GA. GA. No. Okay. Nice. No particular reason. This it's top of my list on my charts. That's it. Like that. Okay. Do you want it like this? Do you want it more zoomed in? No, it's fine. It's fine. Let me just... Not to worry. You got all the way back to 1976. We're not going that far. We go recent. We go recent. I don't think that price action is going to help. Yeah, well, oops. That's a bit wonky. Can you, can you level this down? Maybe level this down later. Put drag this bit lower. Right here? Yeah, yeah. I haven't done this for a while, a bit ris risky with the annotation. So, yeah. I like the, um, what's encompassing this wick as well. Yeah. So here I see a resistant here, some more resistance here and more resistance here. So I'm going to put this resistant line here. Okay, nice. So more recently, there's more support, some more support around here. Okay, I'm just going to zoom in now. I see you want to support right here. Yep. Okay. So I'm going to draw a. This is the monthly. I'm just going to draw a trend line down. Just. Yep. No, just this one here. Huh? Did you mean to put it there? Yeah, there's well, there's two down there. I did I didn't draw it down there. I don't know why it's coming up like that. You you kind of want it like this? Yes, I don't know how it came up. Why it came out like that? Okay. Yeah, these these three three points. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think we can go down to the. Weekly now. Sure. Now, what if we um drew one right over here? Um, do you like that one? We we could draw we can, both. That's four. That's way too far away. Yeah, no, you, you could have both. Okay. Yeah, let's check out the the lower time frames here. We yeah, the weekly. It definitely taps multiple times. Again, it's not your main confluence, but um. You know, you could see price coming up into this area too if it breaks this trend line. You know, that that's like your your safety net almost. And then uh price could bounce off that area as well. Yeah, that makes sense for me. Yeah, then now I want to draw another so I'm gonna start over here, some support here, return resistant, there's some minor support here, support, support, then potentially we would get a resistance here in line with this downward tr tr trend line. Uh, okay. So you want to put it up here? Yep. Okay. Then more recently, I mean, this invalidates it if I put a, put a resistance across this because all these price actions here. I'm sorry, what were you just saying? Can you can you see my cursor moving this um, re rectangle? No, I can't. Not until you paste it, I think. Okay, fine. So there you go. So I pasted it here. Okay. On, I'm just going to grab my mouse. Oh, no. 
this bit here, I was thinking, would it be invalid because it's crossing the price actually has crossed it a few times. Mm. Yeah, again, you're, I mean, you're still on the weekly, you know, so, you know, all these areas are definitely uh, going to be important, but they're more so important because you got this recent resistance and you got all these uh, areas over here um, reacting to that area. Okay, that's fine. Then. Yeah, then let's go down to the daily. Okay. Uh, would you want to mark this off? One, uh, 182? Uh, yes, we can. I was thinking, looking at it daily first, but we can do that, I guess. Okay. It's definitely going to be valid, but let's uh, see the daily. Okay. Let me zoom in out. No, it's all good. So here, resistant support. Yeah, just seeing multiple supports and resistance. There, yeah, that's why I left it there. Yep, yeah, that's fine. And yeah, let's move on. Let's move lower to four hourly. Yeah. Yeah, obviously there's a big rejection there. Have you where do you see me drop the tick? Because every time I drop it, the tick and the line moves elsewhere. I drop it a tick? What do you mean? Um I, I, an arrow. I drew an arrow. Where can you see my arrow? Okay, as soon just... as you like like take your, your uh finger off the mouse. Okay, it was meant to be here. I don't know why it got moved. I'm literally to the right where you see the wick rejection on the, on the right. Okay. Yeah, that's where I dropped it, but I don't know why like, every time right I move. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not sure why you're, uh, it's all over the place for you. It's a bit weird. So you want this right up here? Oh, no, no. I was just, just annotating where I'm just see, see, where I'm seeing. I was trying to draw arrows to like, just explain myself, my thought process to you, really. Okay. But I guess that arrow just keeps moving to different places. That's why. Yeah, so um, so we've got support, resistant, support, resistance, all done. And I've got sure run more. One hour? Oh, okay. no, no, I was drawing something on the four hour. Okay. Can you see it? This, yeah. The support, the line at the bottom. Yeah, that's it. Okay. Nice. Yep, yeah, then one hour, please. One hour. Nice. Um, think. Okay. Yeah, probably a bit lower. Or we'll make it a bit thinner. Right there. Yes. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. It could drop to thirty minutes. Can we zoom out a little bit? Okay. Um, that's fine. Can we zoom back in? Yeah, that's for nearest support turn resistant. That's what I see. Okay. And where do you see price going from here based on all these levels? So let me just get my arrow to point out, well, if this arrow works out. Can you see my mouse? If I... Uh, I can can't see, see your mouse. mouse. I can only see what you draw on the chart. Yeah, because I was trying to do an arrow, but the arrow is pretty 
be pointing somewhere else. Yeah. Okay. I don't know what's going on with it. Yeah. It's, it's definitely my computer or laptop. I don't know what's a bit, oh, okay. a bit weird. That's fine. Um, what, what am I seeing? Yep. Like, where, where's your prediction for uh, price? Um, for the last one, two, for the last about three hours, it's been stuck in the range. Yep. And it's been bearish and bullish bar. So it's not really creating a direction. It's kind of consolidating. So if we were, it's no, if we assume, it's not, are we on a downtrend or uptrend at the moment? It's really, we're not really, well, from, from this chart, I can't really see what, what, trend, what major trend we're in right now. Yeah. So what I'm looking at here, if I could help you out, uh, I think the you know levels are great, and the way you were breaking down, awesome as well. So what I would kind of do here is, and this also helps for you guys too when um, you know you break down the chart and then I'll break down the same exact chart and then you guys can uh, let me actually let me zoom out here on the one hour. Actually, on the four hour here, just to encompass everything. And what I'm going to do is take a screenshot of this. Okay, so we're going to save onto that. And then I'm going to adjust some of these levels here. So we can really get a good sense of where we think price is going to go. All right, so. Looking at the weekly right now, I love the weekly levels. This one, I would actually just move up here a little bit. We'll see what's going on with that. But when it comes to the price action here, I'm just going to really encompass and mark off 182 right over here, that current resistance, previous support over here as well. All this stuff I don't really care about. I do see multiple rejections, but it doesn't really matter, right? We, we just have price bouncing off this area and this key area, it seemed like. And coming all the way down into this area, we kind of consolidated and we broke down into um, this support, which I love that you drew right down here. We came right into that area, bounced off, and then came right back up into that previous support to hold resistance right over here. Then we rejected, came right back into that area and rejected again to continue down, right? So we keep getting, obviously here since 2020, it's all been lower highs, correct? Yes. So it seems like on the higher time frames we're pretty bearish, right? And now looking at the more immediate weekly candles, we've been holding this resistance, rejecting it multiple times, and now we recently, two weeks ago, ended up getting a really bearish candle after this bounce off this little support right over here, right? Um, let me just bring this in just a tad right there. Um, it looks like we were holding some kind of a support right over here multiple times over here, bounced off there and then bounced off there. But then we closed right below that level with this candle and these two current candles last week and now this current week, we're rejecting that level, 174, 700, right? So now if we go to the daily here, again, we, we see all this stuff. We see the multiple rejections. That's okay. But we're just going to pay more attention to our current resistance that we keep rejecting and previous support right here. And then we reject it over here as well. And now we're just sitting in a range. But would you say we're more bearish or bullish still? Bearish because we're making lower lows. 100%, right? So now we, we just see this mess of a range right over here. Can we take a trade in there? Maybe because it's still the daily. But we know that on the daily, as far as where price is probably going to go, if we have a bounce off, 172 over here and price breaks through 175 where are we probably going to end up going at least two on the daily um probably move up to here did you mean to draw up here um no yes it's a bit the the top wick all right over here okay i do yeah. like that too Right, so that, that could possibly be uh, happening, right? You got that wick right there, and then you got that previous resistance. You also do have this area up here, right? And then if you break support down here, you could, you know, this is definitely a place you want to take profit and probably a place that um, we're going to end up marking off. But then you get that area as well. So, like, doesn't this all look a lot cleaner 
once you break above that resistance over here and then you break below this support over here right yes all this is like kind of a mess but it might be tradable we'll see and now if we zoom in on that breaking down the previous candles and wicks you have that rejection where price ended up pushing right into that level and then rejecting it hard so that tells me that we need to see some kind of a daily close above this area before price continues up to 176.500 right but then we push down from that area to create a new low and then we pulled back into this area and then we got a strong bearish candle close right now this could just be a short-term pullback because this candle is failing to break above that candle and it's now bearish right we got that bottom wick we could just be retracing and then we could possibly be continuing right back down but one thing against that bias is the fact that we did create a higher low here which makes this all a range we're creating lower highs and higher lows. So now looking at the four hour, four hour gets, um, again, a little messy. We're still going to mark this off because that's your previous resistance right over there, previous support. We broke below, um, you know, we bounced off this level multiple times as well. So this is definitely a key area, but we do keep creating these lower highs here, right? And, but we also are creating higher lows. So right now, the current price action right here, we're bouncing off this level, right? And now also, if I just bring that up over here, we just got that bullish candle closed right in that area. This is all a range, right? So it's very difficult to be trading in this. Everything is kind of 50-50. So if we look at the one hour here, one hour, I'd probably just move that right there because that kind of encompasses all this stuff over here to the left. And then we got this range right over there. And then over here, we can just kind of adjust that up into here. Now, you got to be careful trading in this because it, it, it gets very difficult to trade in this. So you need to see really good setups, you know, either breaking above here to continue up. And then over here might be even safer buys. So these might be your safer buys just because we have all this price action over here to the left that price could end up rejecting in. But you know that if we break above this resistance right over here, you at least have a chance to retest this high with a clean price action. Just move this down a little bit. See what I'm talking about? Yep. Now, you know, you could possibly take sells once you break this support as well. But at the same time, we are creating higher lows in here. So we get, at any time, we could create a higher low in here and then bounce off. So you know you have safe sells once you do break this area. There's, uh... oh, there it is. Let's see when that happens. So once you break that support right there, you got a clean move coming right into here, right? With how many pips? Was that 168 or? 168. Yeah, I would say 168. 30 minute, still kind of just messy. I wouldn't trade in anything in here. This is, so this is more of like, if, if we were to, color off these ranges this is a no trade range for me and then this is an orange range this is an orange range as well and then below that and above that is going to be your clean range up there make sense and then right above this level i'd probably i mean you could draw it like this yeah, I'd say if you trade on the 30 minute, you get definitely got enough pips in this area that you could wait for a price to close above that area. Right where you are right now, where your mouse is, if uh -huh. price went above that on let's say 30 minutes, yep. would you say the trend has changed because it's broke the, it's made a higher, higher high? The 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 trend has changed on the one hour and the and the 30 minute for sure. Right, because we're creating these higher lows now. We're starting to break above this area and coming into here. It's like, yeah, it's definitely changing. But then I think we're breaking market structure once you break 
um, 176.500 right up here. Because now, look, we're we're starting to break above here, and then boom, now we change market structure. All right now, we're officially you know bullish. Over here, you're still kind of creating these lower highs over here. You know, and even over here, you could very well come up into here, get a deeper pullback, and then continue back down because we have this resistance right over here. But once you break above that area, now you're starting to change market structure. Make sense? Yeah, understood. Very clear. Great job, man. So so if we go back and look, it's um like it was a little bit more difficult over here to understand where we wanted to go, right? To, to find those safe trading ranges. Not to like, you know, say your breakdown was bad, but I'm saying like it once you go back to the higher time frames, erase everything and then retry it, just like Dylan did, right? It gets more clearer for you. Agreed. Makes sense? Even this level, I would probably bring this down to like a no trade range, possibly, until we break into here. Just because you got all that area multiple rejections over there um but again most recent support we want to definitely pay attention to but this whole area i just all of this over here is is really not tradable it's all just ranging everything could really fake you out so great job buddy let's go and again you keep uh volunteering you're gonna get better at that So right now, price just kind of ranging over here. I'm probably not going to be trading uh, for a little bit until maybe GJ breaks above this area. We could take buys in this 40 pip range. Or if price breaks below here, I think you're going to have safer sales on GJ, 158, 400. Gold, really just dog shit, right? Guys, you guys want to wait for price to break above this level? Again, we don't have much going on until unemployment claims, which should have actually already came out and it didn't really move. Yeah, 830. Unemployment claims uh, a little bit more than usual or uh, more than previous and more than um, expected right over here. So, you know, this this could rise gold later on. Right. But I would want to see a nice bullish candle close above that area. And maybe you guys could take that up. And then finally, with US 30, we're starting to approach that area. We're kind of faking this level out over here. So, again, I think if anything closes above that area, maybe you could take something up. You possibly might be getting a nice, strong one-hour candle close over here. Maybe the next one creates a bottom wick, passes the high of it, and continues up. That could be a possibility. But again, the um, it's it's very choppy in here. In US 30, it's it's tough for me to buy with us creating all these like lower highs over here and it just being uh, make, making a very difficult pair to trade. Let's see. You see how we're like respecting this bearish trend here. So just be aware of that. You know, don't don't take anything um too ambitious. I think safe cells are gonna be below this whole area over here on US 30. You could continue this down on the higher time frames. You guys have any questions? Nope. Everything good? Awesome. Yeah, no. Thank you. It's always a shame when we uh we can't really grab a trade on, on the uh in the live markets over here on our pairs, but um at least you're not losing, you know. Just sit back, wait, sit on your hands and make sure you're monitoring the markets. And if you see your setup, execute with all your confirmations and, and all that stuff. Valid stop loss, everything. All right, but if you don't get that, you're not trading. You're back testing. Get your fix on the simulator. All right, guys. Yes, sir. Thank well, you. So I'll see you guys at one uh, p.m. for our back testing, and uh, and uh, look forward to it. All right, bro. See you later, man. All right, boys. Have a good one. Thanks.